Last week, I went to the, uh, the Radiant Panel Association uh, Building Radiant Conference and, and Exposition in Reno. And at, at RPA, there was a, a prominent hydronic heating engineer named John Siegenthaler who noted that as houses get a little bit smaller and more efficient, the heating loads can get as low as 10 BTUs per square foot. Now, what that means is that in some cases, the domestic uh, hot water load is bigger than the heating load. So, is the future of space heating a very efficient water heater? Uh, we're about to find out from Gary Klein, formerly with the California Energy Commission and now a managing partner of Affiliated International Management. Gary has been intimately involved in energy efficiency and renewable energy since 1973. He has a passion for hot water, getting into it, getting out of it, and efficiently delivering it to meet customers' needs. And Gary is going to be uh, joined by uh, Linda Wigington, who's the uh, Director of Special Projects for Affordable Comfort, Inc. in uh, Waynesburg, Pennsylvania. And also, uh, Linda also spearheads ACI's Thousand Home Challenge. So Gary and Linda, it's all yours. Thank you all very much. Um, they give me two microphones. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with them all. Um, I guess I get a clicker to talk with our presentation. You want to, you want to take it off? Please. I've asked okay. Linda to join us this afternoon. Um, she is uh, spearheading a talk at the Hot Water Forum, which is later this week in the same room here, I bet, in this hotel, um, on this very topic. And since she was able to get here a couple days early, I thought I'd have her join us because of her perspectives I think you'll enjoy. So I have a few key points to, to make. We don't have very much time. And what I want to do is to cover the basics of why I think the future of space heating is a very efficient water heater. OK, it's supposed to work. There we go. First question for you. This is time for you all to raise hands. Blood sugar is getting low. You have to follow the rules here. Got to raise your hands. How many days a year when you're home do you use hot water? Anybody? How many of them? Everyone you're home, right? And when you're not home, you're using it somewhere else. Is that fair? How many days a year do you heat your house? Anybody live in this part of the country, down in Southern California? OK, how many days a year do you have to heat? You're right, and peak hours of heating in your home is hours of those 10 days. Anybody here from like the north, like Wisconsin or somebody north like that? Anybody? How many days a year do you have to heat your house? Too many, I heard that. 200 days a year you heat the house? I doubt it. I doubt it. I'm po hundreds possible. How many hours of those are peak? Has anybody ever designed heating and air systems? HVAC systems? You design for a 97 percentile or 99 percentile, and that's intended so those few days of the year when it happens, you're running 24-7. It's really very few. So how many days do you air condition your house? How many? Every one of them, Phil, right? No. He's from Vegas. He has an excuse, right? So it turns out even in Vegas, you don't air condition every day. There are a few days it's not air conditioning. The point I'm trying to make is this. Most of us in this country live in a place where we don't need heating or air conditioning all days of the year. There's a swing season in almost every climate zone in this country. But every day we're home, we need hot water. Fair enough? The second one is, what percent of household energy use has to do with space heating? What do you think? Half? How many want to go for half? Anybody think it might be half? How many think it might be a quarter? How many think it might be 75%? How many don't have a bloody clue? Raise your hands. This is, OK, it turns out it varies all over the United States. And it depends a great deal on how efficient your home is. So we'll get to that in a second. How many, what percent of your energy use has to do with space cooling? It depends. Vegas, a lot. Houston, a lot. Minnesota, a lot less, right? Depends. You, it just depends where you live. But it's not all year. It's not all times. Now, what percent is your water heating? A lot. 
It turns out that national averages are probably around 25 to 30 percent of household energy use, not price, because we often have different fuels, but roughly 25 to 30 percent or so national average for hot water, for all, all energy things in your home. But what I'd observe is this. We've been building more efficient houses, and we've been making our systems in our homes more energy efficient for well over 25 to 30 years. The number of people per household has not changed dramatically in the last 30 years. When I started working in this field in the early 70s, there were 3.2 people per household on average. Today, there are 2.8. Now, that must have been babies and teenagers, okay? But it hasn't changed that fast. But we've made our buildings more thermally efficient and our systems that heat them more energy efficient. And what I'd observe is that the water heating as a percentage has been growing, okay? And it will continue to grow as we do things into the future to make our buildings better. I would also observe that if you live in a mild climate, um, I picked on Southern California here because that's where we are and that's where I had easy to access data. But everything south of the Mason-Dixon line, water heating is bigger than space heating. Guess where we're building most of our new homes? South of the Mason-Dixon line. Southern California, meaning here all the way down to the San Diego border, Mexican border, almost 50% of the household gas consumption has to do with water heating. A third or so is related to space heating. It's a big difference. OK, here's some examples. Uh, Kevin, you should recognize this one. Um, friends of mine send me pictures, I put them up and then tell them where they're at. So this is a boiler-based space heating and water heating system with a sidearm tank. Anybody seen one of these or have one of them? Pretty typical, right? Mostly in the north and the east where we see basements and oil. Does that make sense to everybody? Pretty common. How about this one? Water heater in closet, air handler right next to it. Anybody ever seen one of these? It's gas-fired stuff, okay? Uh, atmospheric, and I wonder where the combustion air comes from. Uh, here's another one, different place, right? You like this one, huh? So where does the makeup air come from? The same place you're trying to heat it. Something's wrong with this picture, folks. Uh, where's the combustion air come from, right? Same place. What is the, does it, can the air handler cause the water heater to downdraft? Uh-huh. That probably is really good for indoor air quality, right? Not. All right. How about condensing gas water heaters? Anybody looked at some of these for systems? This is changing the technology to very high efficiency gas um, where you've got seal combustion. Uh, this is showing you uh, a very high burner capacity, highly efficient water heater in gas terms. Um, and the air handler is very small. This is for a 2,400 square foot house. 